small little sauger. Little guy. All right, so we're moving. Hour and 34 minutes into the move. Oh, we got fish. Hooked up. Oh, this is a better fish than I've caught in the last 36 hours. Put that in the bucket. Here comes another one. This is looking like a walleye too. Got him. This is way better. I'm so happy I moved. Oh, we got a fish on now. All we had to do was start cooking. All right, just got set up out here. It's about 10 p.m. I've got a few day camping trip out here. Uh, I've got a dead stick down just with a red hook and a fat head on it actually. And then I've got a Rattlemaster spoon. It's a perch pattern with the glow back. We'll see if we can catch a fish overnight here. You guys will find out if I do because I'll show it to you. Um, otherwise, I'm just kind of settling in, getting everything ready to go. And then tomorrow is going to be game time. We're going to hit it hard. We're going to get into the walleye and a catch and cook, hopefully. Let's do it. Looks like we got something hanging on the bottom. So we're going to lower this right on down. Let's see if we can't uh, get this day started right. Oh, yep. We got a fish over here. They're waking up. 8.17 a.m. Let's see if we can get into them. Roamer on the bottom. Screaming small sauger. But it is the first fish of the trip. Our power just went out. And the first fish of the trip, small little sauger. Woo! We'll let him go. Go. We're gonna catch this fish off the bottom here. Just on a shiner minnow head. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, he, he nodded out. Here we go. Hit it. Take it. Got him. He's tugging a little. Maybe a little better size, huh? Oh, it's a tulipy! Tulipy! Look at that. Nice. Well, we'll have to get a measure, get it entered in. 12 inches, headed back. Got him, got him. This is a bigger fish than the other ones I've caught so far. Feels burbity. It's not a burbit. It's a big tulipy. It's a big tulipy. This is what we've been seeing on the live scope. It's a 14 inch tulipy. We'll let her go. Smelly fish, gross. Oh, we got another one coming to the dead stick. Probably a tulipy. That's what's been playing around here. We gotta get this on fish donkey. We're in a fish donkey tournament. Little break in the action. Gonna eat some lunch. And today we're drinking the Bang Lemon Drop. One of the best flavors that they make um, I like the lemon, the lime, like those lighter flavors are really good. So if you like energy drinks, check them out. Bang Lemon Drop, one of my top flavors that I like. They're a partner of the channel. They help make sure that all of our videos are free. So link down in the description if you want to check them out. Let's get back to fishing. Oh, this has got a little bit of weight to it. So we're heading shakes. It's either a sauger or a walleye. And it's another tulipy little guy. Will you let me get you out for crying out loud? Good morning. Day two out here. Yesterday we got to do a bunch of tulipy. I didn't show a bunch of them because it was pretty repetitious and those things smell. But Today on the ice, what we're looking to do is get into the walleye. It's Martin Luther King Jr. Day today, so that means there's going to be a lot of people leaving the ice. We're on a little bit of a warm-up here. The morning bite should be starting right now. It's about 8.30 a.m. For the next hour or so, it could start, and then it'll carry us through that 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock hour. At that point, we're going to decide, are we moving today and picking up the shack, moving to another area of the lake, so that way we get a better bite for the evening and then tomorrow morning, or... Is the bite picked up enough during this morning bite that we feel confident we're going to stay here for tonight and tomorrow so let's see how the day unfolds let's get into some walleye and hopefully the fish start biting here really soon let's go he's done he's on we got him 
No, he's not. He's gone. He's not on. Ah! We're dropping our go-to Rattlemaster back down. I've, tr I've tried so many things this morning. It's not even funny. So we're going to see. This was doing the best yesterday on the few that I did get into. And it looks like we're already getting attention. So this is very promising. And we're hooked up just like that. Rattlemaster for the win, man. This is the fish that got off that one. Doesn't feel big, probably small sauger. And he's got the other minnow in his mouth. Just vegging out today, eating all the fish. Small little guy, we'll let her go. Here we go, we got something diving down. Can we catch the same one? That means I probably don't have a minnow on the other line. Got him. Feels like a smaller sauger. Little guy, little sauger. Got him. Got him. Got him. Small sauger again. All right, so we're moving. Uh, I've been out here for a little over 24 hours on this spot. I figured I'd give it a full cycle and see how the fish do. It's about 145 right now. I've got a full 24 hours before I gotta go, so it is the perfect opportunity to pick up the shack and move it to another spot here on Lake of the Woods. So I've got the chesty cam rolling. Uh, we are gonna show you a fast pace. You can kind of see what the process looks like moving one of these. I've got to essentially take everything that's in here off, anything that can move around on the floor and get damaged, anything that's on a table, anything that's on the bed. It's all got to get taken down, put on the floor, packed in the truck, all the camera gear, everything's got to come down. The generator's got to get disconnected. So it's not just as easy as cranking it up and moving it because any bump at all, even the smallest of bumps with this thing in the air wobbles everything and everything will get destroyed. So it's a little bit of a process. You're going to be able to see what that looks like. And hopefully we're going to get on a better bite because this has been absolutely ridiculous and I'm tired of catching Tulabi and playing around with them. So let's get moving and have some fun. Let's go. <laughs> Now we got to get covers back on inside. Just got to go back on. Got one itty bitty sauger. I just caught a little while ago. Not good enough to stay. I'm not staying for a little sauger. All right, take a look. This is what it looks like before we head out. It's worth it if you can find the fish, so. All right, so we're gonna just start on one side. Just enough to get a little tension there, make sure we're loose, and I'll bring the tongue all the way up first. All right, now we'll do the tongue and then we'll get the pins in. All right, tongue's up. That's the beauty of that drop hitch. I'll do this side. Okay, that side's up. Now this side. There we go, just kick away the snow a little bit from the frame. So that way we got a little less bouncing. Now off to the next spot. Awesome, off we go to the next spot. What we're gonna do, you probably can't see here, but we're gonna move over to uh, Adrian's Plot, another road further out. That's where we're gonna go. Go check it out. Pull up my maps on my phone, so that way I can see where I'm going here. And this is where it's important to go as slow as possible. If I can avoid any big bumps, I'm going to. Even though it's got suspension, there's not a lot of weight on it for the leaf spring, so it's just gonna bounce. So we're just gonna go nice and slow. The less of a disaster I make in there, the better. Now normally, 
If you're ice camping, it's not that big of a deal uh, because you don't have all that gear in there. So you just grab your couple things, throw them in your truck or on your ATV and you go, right? If it's empty, it's no big deal. This thing can handle it. It's just with all my stuff in there. All right, we're here at the next spot. They got wheelhouse spot to plow out, so we're taking one of these. Now we gotta crank her down. We're gonna crank the tongue down first. First, we gotta drop the jack, so that way we can just do the cranky crank if we have any issues. That's all I do. Drop that, drop that. Now I just gotta get some tension on to pull the pin out. There we go, nice and loose. One click more, there we go. Boom, boom, pin comes out. Throw that up here. And then we drop her down. The reason why I leave the stand down is in case I do want to go somewhere with the truck and not move this, I can still get this off of here because it's going to be at an angle without having to crank the house up and lift. Should be more than enough. Now we'll do each side. So same here. We're going to crank it until it's tight. We're going to stop there so that way we don't tip everything inside. Do the other side here. Same thing, get her tight until the pin wants to come out. Take it out. And this side will go all the way down. And make sure we got some extra loose out because it is gonna settle as soon as we start walking on it. Like this. Now we'll get this side to go down the rest of the way. Boom, there she is. You can tell one side's higher up than the other. I don't think it's horrible. Now we can bank it in, and that's what we're gonna do next. Make sure all our flaps are down, and then we'll bank it in. There we go. Just like that. Outside's done. Now we gotta get holes drilled inside. Can see something's poking at the door. Not too bad. Take a look around. That's still hanging there. Live scope didn't move too far. Stuff stayed in pretty good shape here. You can see the box moved, the chair moved. But overall, not too bad. I'm impressed. I have really good slow driving skills. All right, time to set her back up. First things first, we gotta do these two holes. Last hole. Okay, now, dog her out of here and set back up and get our lines back down. Hour and 34 minutes into the move. And we're set back up with lines down and just one camera left to get down there. Oh, we got fish. Let's jig it, see if we can get him, get him to come in. Here we go. Hooked up. Oh, this is a better fish than I've caught in the last 36 hours. Right here. Here we go. Yes, sir. This is looking like an eater, maybe. Woo! Woo! Wild walleye. First walleye of the trip. See, this is probably gonna be one going in the bucket to eat just in case we don't catch anything else. That way we can have a catch clean cook. Woo! All right. 12 and three quarter inch walleye on the board. On the board. I've got 24 hours left in the trip and got set back up, first drop, first rod, caught a 12 and three quarter inch walleye. Granted, not a big walleye, I know that, and that's not gonna be what I'm gonna show you all night. However, it's an eater, we're doing a catch clean cook tonight. I'm really excited about that. We've got 24 hours back on this spot here. We're gonna get into walleye, obviously. We're gonna get into some good eaters. Hopefully we're gonna have a feast tonight and have some to bring home as well. I can't wait, let's do this. This is like the most energizing part of the trip that I've had so far. That was the first walleye of the trip. We're turning this baby around, let's do it. And just like that, we're seeing fish on the bottom and I'm gonna drink some bang because dude, we gotta get the energy going. This is gonna be a long night. Hopefully they just stay going all night long. I don't need to sleep tonight, I'm gonna fish. 
Got him. I hope it's a walleye again. Good weight, just like the other one. Probably another 13 inch something. Either a walleye or a sauger. No, a tulipy. It's a longer one. Woo! That rattle master is doing work. Let's see if this thing's over 15. 14 and a quarter, so we'll let her go, but another fish another one bites the dust all right letting her go see you later this is way better i'm so happy i moved oh i don't know why i debated it so long i literally was like i'm sure the whole lake's like this i should just go home man that's that's how depressed i was <laughs> i was gonna go home never never go home early on an ice fishing trip Good morning. We are out here my last morning on the ice. This is the first time I've fished this spot in the morning because we moved over here uh, yesterday afternoon. Last night was totally uneventful, just like the other spot. Not really anything coming through at night. So uh, we've got a few hours to fish. Then we're going to do a catch, clean, cook, eat, and that's going to be our lunch. And then we're going to pack up and head home. So I'm hoping I'm seeing stuff on the screen right now. Let's see if we can get into it. This is going to be fun. Let's do it. All right, so this morning has not gone well. We haven't caught any fish. However, that's okay, because I've got two fish in the bucket from yesterday that we're gonna clean up right now, and we're gonna do a catch and cook. Let's get going. Oh, we got a fish on now. All we had to do was start cooking. See if he pulls it and takes it. Uh, if he's like the others, he's just got the minnow and not the hook. Oh, we got the fish. Maybe it's another eater. Maybe we're gonna have a bigger lunch. Three fish. Three would be a good meal. We'll eat it. Small walleye. We'll throw her on the skillet. All right. Another small walleye. Unfortunately, due to YouTube's policies, I can't show the filleting of the fish, but when I got them all filleted up and cleaned up, I'll jump back into the video with you. We'll get started with cutting this one up. All right, so we just finished filleting. We've got our fillets in here. We're gonna rinse them off now. They're all cleaned up. This wonderful knife. This is one of the Cutco branded knives. This thing is awesome. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of water and we're just gonna rinse these off a little bit here. The way that I like to do it is put a little water in the pan, mesh them around, make sure I don't feel any bones. These are pretty small, so even if there's some minor bones, I'm not really worried about it. So I just go through Try to get as much of the uh, blood off. Then as I clean them, we've got a couple napkins here that we're gonna set them on once they're relatively clean. This is just three, three small fish. It's two, uh, two little walleye and a sauger. This will be a perfect little lunch. All right, now what we're gonna do is get the oil warming up. So I've got my jet boil. This is actually thing for the top of the jet boil. So it comes with this little adapter right here, it's fuel input. Then we take one of our trusty one pound propane tanks, screw it into here. We're gonna open this window, so that way we got a little bit of airflow. So we're gonna get some oil in here. We just use pure vegetable oil. Now we gotta get that fuel, I'm sorry, that oil up to heat. We'll just wait to see when it starts boiling. It shouldn't take too long. It's a really hot jet boil. All right, and then what we're gonna do, so we've got a Ziploc bag here, Frank's Red Hot. We're gonna coat it in Frank's Red Hot sauce. And then we're gonna do another Ziploc with some spicy J. Siemens Catch and Cook. Dab these guys, get them nice and dry. Because ideally we want them to stick in the sauce. We don't need them sticking with water. And we're just gonna drop them in sure they're not too big. These long skinny pieces I could probably cut in half, but they'll be fine. Kind of like a fish finger, if you will. Now we'll zip this up. Give it a little shaky shaky. Oh, don't those look good. Now we've got our other Ziploc bag, because I'm not gonna use the whole bag and I don't want to do, dunk it in here, otherwise the problem is this is all then contaminated. So we're just gonna pour some of it into the Ziploc, which I think I just screwed up opening it because I didn't tear it low enough. I'm gonna put a little in here. 
so what we're going to do is grab a few pieces do this up shake it up oh, look at them okay we'll drop our first one in Don't these look good? Maybe not the first two, but look at these. Whoo, they look good. Falling apart. Really tender. All right, we're getting the other batch ready to go here, but we're gonna try some of this. Look at this, fresh walleye. Oh, so good. Perfect. Oh, it's great, and it's not too spicy either. Even though this is the spicy catch and cook with Frank's Red Hot, the Frank's Red Hot cooks the heat out. Oh my gosh, so good. You guys, you guys gotta try this. If you haven't tried this recipe, I got it from Clayton Schick. So thank you, Clayton. He's probably not watching this video, but if he is, thank you. It's a great idea with the Frank's Red Hot. Mmm, so good. I'm sure there's better ways to do this. Comment down below and let me know how I can make sure that I do this better uh, in the future so that the I don't burn it. I probably need to get a thermometer for my oil, but something for next trip. So let me know down in the comments below. It's been a super fun trip. I got to pack up and go home after I'm done eating. Thank you so much. And until next time, take it easy.